Next up, I want to look at the boxes themselves. Uh, I think my friend was uh, uh, mistaken in looking at these nice hardwood finish to think that these were solid hardwood cabinets. That is not, of course, the case, nor should it be. Uh, speaker cabinets, if they were made of hardwood, not only would be outrageously expensive, but they really, hardwood is really not an ideal uh, speaker cabinet. The hardwood will, will have a tendency to vibrate, and you don't want, if when you put a speaker in a box, it becomes a, a, a single element, and you don't want that box to vibrate at all, to have any ring or any tone to them at all. So hardwood would not be a good choice, nor any, uh, any kind of a solid wood. Far better to use this new material, it's called MDF, or medium density fiberboard. That's exactly what these are made up of. And uh, so that's really nice. Not only is it medium density fiber wood, you may not be able to see it in the video very well, but that's one inch. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's, uh, maybe I can get that in there, reflect the light in there, but that's one inch depth. So that's incredibly hard, heavy duty, high quality stuff. I buy th three quarter inch because that's what's available at the lumber shop for making speaker boxes, but that one inch, wow. So, and then of course, hardwood laminate. So that's beautiful. Uh, one of the things they, these guys did is really did a nice job building these speakers. In fact, I, if you, I don't know if you can see it in this video, that there's a, you can see a little bit of edge here. This is a piece of hardwood, this corner piece. In fact, I can kind of see the line right there. So this is a piece of cornered hardwood right here that they glued onto the front MDF, the, the laminated MDF, and then they put another one here, and that's how they got these nice, beautiful corners. That's all hardwood that's been ground and shaped. So that's absolutely beautiful. I, I love to be able to build boxes like this, but you gotta do it in a factory. So really nice job of the boxes. They are very hard. They do ring a little bit. Oh, not so much this one, but the, I think the other one rings a little bit. But uh, pretty dead, basically. So beautiful boxes. They are a bit of overkill. You saw in the other video how tall they are. These go all the way to the floor here. So they're, this one's almost four feet tall. The other's you know, four and a half or something. So uh, it's really overkill. They, they weigh a ton. The back, the bottom of the chamber is, is sealed off so they don't, the, the, the effective chamber only goes down to about eight or 10 inches off the floor. And then in the, uh, the rest of it's sealed off. So beautiful boxes, absolutely wonderful finish. I, I can't make finishes like this in, in the shop. This is a factory finish, very, very tough finish on these. So I, I love the boxes, they're wonderful, beautiful. Okay, next up we'll talk about these uh, crossovers a little bit. I was very impressed with the design of these crossovers. First of all, this is a complete panel that uh, secures to the back of the box. And when you remove that panel, you've got your crossover mounted on the back, so you have direct access to the crossover. That's cool. Uh, I never did that. I've always mounted the crossover on a panel, bolted it inside, glued it inside. So this is nice and accessible. You take it out and you fix it. Not that they, anything hardly ever goes wrong with these. Uh, they usually survive. I haven't tested them, but I'm sure this crossover is working fine. It's the drivers that died. But. So beautiful, and of course they, they do what I, I, I don't even I put connectors on the front, but they have these nice gold, uh, gold connectors they unscrew, and you can put the wires in and stuff. And they come right across through the panel, and they are soldered to the to the uh, little panel here that's uh, for the crossover. Uh, crossover design involves putting in, using, utilizing coils and capacitors to filter out the highs for the from the base mid driver and to filter out the lows from the tweeter. And so, when you have just one coil, one capacitor, it's a first order. Two here means a second order network. And then three would be a third and so forth. Fourth would be a fourth hit in, uh, order. And the idea is to, uh, with increasing numbers of parts, we steepen the slope or, st or, or quicken the attenuation above or below the crossover point that the sound is uh, generated from each driver. So with a second order, it's, it's 12 dB per octave. So at 3,000 cycles, uh, the, t the tweeter and the mid-range are operating together and one uh, can you see that? One octave below that, uh, the, the mid-range would be doing most of the work. The tweeter would be attenu attenuated by 12 dB. One octave above that, say about 6,000 cycles, the mid-range would be attenuated at about 12 dB. So the idea is uh, that we have 
two sets of parameters to concern ourselves with. The more the crossover parts, parts, the steeper that slope, which would be good, but on the other hand, the more parts that are in the crossover, the more pieces, more components you introduce into the signal path going to the driver, and this is not a good place to do that back at the speaker end. That's why I'm a fan of uh, electronic crossovers. We do that before we come out to the, from the amplifier output to the speaker and have no crossover parts out here. So, but be that as it may, if you're going to do this, uh, you got to make a compromise. So this is a nice uh, a choice, I think. Second order, you get the relatively steep, steep slopes, but not so, not so many components in here. More, more aggressive than that, I think you add so many components. And this would be a, 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 called an odd order network. Uh, not, 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 it's not an odd order, it's a 180 degree outer phase network. So the tweeter and the, uh, and the mid-range are, are coming out, out 180 degrees out of phase. And so they did, in fact, reverse the polarity of the tweeter in this setup. They, these guys knew what they were doing, they did it right. It's, um, it's impressive. I'm really pleased, I was very really impressed with the crossovers. And, I'll, and by the way, one more thing, the, the speaker wire is so notoriously uh, poor quality, and this is really nice quality speaker. I've had to strip some of this and uh, pre-soldered it here. And this is nice copper wire, nice heavy copper wire. So I was impressed. So, uh, and also I didn't mention, but the uh, so often when I look at crossover parts, in factory systems, I see really cheap, cheesy little coils and capacitors. And here, I'm seeing nice, hefty coils. And these are expensive. I can spend 10, 20, 30 bucks a piece for these coil, for these air, air core coils. And nice, I mean, they didn't go cheap. And the, the, these capacitors don't look like cheap junk. They, they, so I was quite impressed with the crossovers generally. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at the drivers themselves. And, uh, here I was not really all that impressed. Oh, as so often is the case, if I would say what would be the most important component in any speaker system, it would by hands down be the drivers. They are the far more important of all the, and they don't really good quality drivers that just don't cost that much money. They don't like hundreds of dollars a piece. You can get them for hundred dollars a piece, but you can get good drivers for not crazy money. So these, the biggest, I took them apart and just to kind of look, one inch voice coil, no surprise there, nothing really a big deal there, but magnet structure, it's not really all that impressive. It does have a vented pole, uh, but they're just medium quality drivers, not really anything special. And I was really surprised at the tweeters, there's no rear, no chamber here, which is no surprise. It, not, not the tweeters necessarily have to have a, a you know, a, a chamber above here for, the good ones do. This replacement that I bought for the center channel driver does have a chamber in the back here that's sealed. That's a, that's probably got some insulation in the back there. So that the voice coil is vented just like here. You've got a vent for the voice coil and in the case of a tweeter you need to seal that over. So they put a seal and they maybe put some dampening inside there. So that's the case here with this tweeter. No such case here. Not that that's absolutely essential but uh, then they added this extra magnet this is just glued on here. That you can you can see the factory label under there. They had to change the parameters of these tweeters to get them to act a little differently than they were from the factory when they got them. And so it's, it's kind of Mickey Mouse to me. I don't really not really don't really like that. I'm not really a fan of that. But it is what it is. Uh, they did the same thing with the uh, mid-range drivers. That the these the, the six and a half ones. Not a very impressive magnet structure. In fact, the same size as the other one, the same size magnet. They should be a bigger magnet on a six and a half driver, especially you've got two of these in this system and you only have one six and a half. So you ought to put a heavier magnet on it, make it work a little better, right? Make it handle a little more, more power. So, uh, and I pulled these apart and uh, the voice coils absolutely were smoked out of these things. Uh, here's one of the voice coils. And you can see this voice coil it's supposed to be a, a bright copper color, and it's black, so that's very bad. Let me show you compared to this one. That's what it's supposed to look like, nice and shiny. This one puffed probably because the lead, the lead failed here. You overpower these, you can fail, you can, you can uh, break the lead, but obviously, it does. You don't do that to them. My gosh, that's really smoked. That's really bad. So the drivers are just not very impressive, and I think that's part of the reason why. Uh, I might argue, it, it may very well have been that these were subjected to full range uh, signal, 
and especially with uh, theater surround sound and you got these big booms and so forth and it probably killed the drivers just overloaded them but a smoked voice coil means it was overloaded for a long time that was like putting the thing into an electric chair it was bad but uh, they're just not adequate not very very big magnets to them the tweeters curiously enough I found two of these tweeters in two of the boxes in this you can see the label on there maybe you can't can't quite read it, but it says ScanSpeak. It's a, it's a uh, high-quality driver manufacturer. In fact, I looked these up. They're 100, the new ones, the, the, the 9400s, are uh, 130 bucks a piece. They're not cheap. So uh, there's some really nice drivers. I suspect three of the tweeters in this system were burned out because the other, the other factory tweeters have the, the Vena Acoustics label on it, and these don't, of course. So I think these are replacements, and I think... What they did is they burned out some of the tweeters and they put uh, three of these in there. Then one of these got burned out. So I only have two good ones. One of them was in the center channel and I'm stealing it. And we're going to put, put two of these together in one of the kits. One of the pairs of speakers, will, the other two remaining surviving uh, smaller tweeters, we'll put in the other two. And we have our one replacement tweeter, the, uh, the Hi-Vi tweeter that I bought for the center channel that we'll use. So. Um, that's the deal with the tweeters. Not really impressed, except for the fact these are replacements. They're really nice. I think these are nice speakers here. Wish I had four of these, five of these. But uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about the repair of these speakers. First, we have to realize that a speaker system is made up of three components. You have the mid-range, the tweeter, and the crossover, and these are all matched. In other words, these two drivers aren't going to play together all by themselves very well. They're going to have to be helped along to play together well because this driver might be a little louder than the mid-range, and so you, uh, you might have a system then that where the highs are a little too bright, or the mid-range may be too bright, and you might have a system where the mid-range is too bright compared to the tweeter. So you, that's one issue. And then, of course, getting the crossover, getting the impedances right, is a very complicated pile of stuff. So the uh, crossover is designed specifically to help these drivers to work together well, and the and the uh, values of each of the parts is very carefully, specifically selected to get these drivers to work together. If you then come along and burn out, let's say, a mid-range or a tweeter, you go to put another tweeter in here, all of a sudden, this doesn't all match anymore. So that's a problem. And uh, the only proper way to go is to replace both drivers and then start over again with a new crossover. To do that for these speakers, for the for the for the pair of uh, and any pair of these was going to be in the four hundred and fifty dollar range for the parts alone. So uh, that's with high quality drives. It's fifty dollars a piece for drivers, and then new crossover parts. You'd be in the for the for the just a pair of speakers. You're going to be in the four fifty range to do that, and that's with Matta Sounds Leap software, and you would do it really do it right, and it would be correct. But these systems, because of the design. Uh, philosophy issues that I have with it I did not recommend spending that money for another hundred dollars per box you could buy your own boxes put them in sealed have just one five and a quarter driver and a tweeter and really do it right so that's what I would suggested to the owner of these to instead of going crazy on this system let's just replace drivers so I know that's not really the right way to go because you will have problems with you know the drivers not matching up and we're just gonna it's, it is going to be whatever it's going to be uh, we do have all, we had four working tweeters, so we're going to use those, reuse those. They, I don't believe these scan speaks match anything anyway, so that, that's, a, that's a problem. And then I bought this, the Vi, high vi tweeter, and they're not going to match. Nothing's going to, everything's going to be different. It's, it is going to be whatever it's going to be. I didn't think the system warranted more than that. Having said that, once we replace all the mid range drivers, and then if at some point down the road he wants, the owner wants, we can come back, we can buy five tweeters, we can get do all, do a set of crossover. We'd only need two crossover designs because then the, we re could replace the two working, these are two working drivers, these here, they're the same thing I think, but he's got a shield on the back, but these are two working drivers for the center channel. So if we would have, we've already replaced the two, the four drivers now from the other two speakers, we could replace these two, then we would have a match system for three of the boxes. And we could just have one crossover network for those, those three boxes, use it the same design, and then a different design for the, the uh, six and a halfs. So uh, 
we're going to go the cheap route. We're just going to replace drivers. I know, it's, and I just want to make sure when I'm saying when I'm doing that when we talk about that that it's not the correct way to go. They're not going to really be able to match. But let me let me show you what one of the drivers for the the five and a quarter driver for replacement for the uh, the two front channels. And right away, compared to the factory drivers in there. One of the things we see, eh, this is a paper cone instead of a, I'm not a huge fan of the paper cone, but paper cone has a, has a soft, uh, have a more natural kind of a characteristic compared to polypropylene. So the many folks will like paper cones. Nice rubber surround here. This is a beautiful driver manufacturer called SB, uh, SB Acoustics. They make wonderful drivers. Now this was a cheap driver because I was going cheap. The, the one I had originally selected was, was uh, $50. Uh, that was what I was recommending, but to go cheap, I got these for 20 bucks. It is a plastic, a plastic former instead of a, instead of an aluminum or metal one. But look at the magnet on this compared to this one. Wow, that's a heftier magnet on the back of that thing. So it's a little bit more serious a driver, and should handle a little bit more oomph without without major problems. So we got four of those. The big problem I had was that the design of these was somewhat uh, square with squared off corners and so I needed a driver that that was doing had the same design and having got these they don't exactly fit and I had to modify them and that's very 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 hard to do after the fact when it's a non-round situation I had to buy a router and route them out by hand very difficult to do and get it well but it is what it is so we're going to put four of those in there that's the mid-range driver and, uh, again, it won't exactly match. It, uh, these are going to be in pairs, so I bought the 8 ohm version, and uh, they'll be wired parallel, which means now that together they will be down at 4 ohms, so that's probably in the ballpark. Uh, I couldn't, if I'd bought the 4 ohm ones, we'd have been down at 2 ohms, so that would have been a problem, so we got to avoid that. So that was the only real consider design consideration I had to think about. So we'll take a look at the 6.5 inch drivers, and actually, uh, in some ways, these look an awful lot like the uh, SB drivers. They have a paper cone that's got, these are a wool cone. It's got some material in it. And a rubber surround. I always use a rubber surround though, but I don't think anybody's making uh, drivers with, with foam surround anymore. But one of the impressive things about these drivers, and they were only $30 and they do have a vented pole, but look at the size of that magnet, wow. So that's much more impressive than the Factory drivers, this is really we're going to see a big difference. Wow, we see the difference in those magnets. So uh, putting a, I wanted to put a serious driver in here without spending crazy money, and I had a $50 driver in mind again, as I said, but we went ahead with cheap, and uh, so I found these for 30 bucks. This is a 8-ohm uh, driver. It's uh, called Silver Flute. I have a pair of these 8-inch drivers in a system I've used for years. I'm quite happy with them. So. And so this will be somewhat uh, a balanced because they'll have all, all, all paper cones. And these, the other thing was about all these drivers is they had a base reflex alignment that would fit for the boxes that we have. So uh, we're gonna put these guys in here tonight, solder them up, and uh, see how they work. Okay, here we have the uh, completed speakers now. Uh, look pretty good, They're very difficult to get those drivers in their holes and to make them look really, really good because of the recessing of these but uh, much easier when drivers are just mounted flush on the surface of the uh, panel but in any case uh, they look pretty good they sound really amazing surprisingly good so uh, bass response is really surprisingly good they're all of course bass reflex so they uh, they do sound really nice to my ears so uh, I'm sure my buddy will be quite happy with the uh, rebuild